anyway, uh, so I guess first I'm going to present you a, a hello world example. Um, so this is a, like a small code. And so the only a few lines basically initialize MIX and finalize it. And in between, we print out some messages. And uh, I guess the point I want to make here is, uh, uh, so usually, you know, if you build a thing uh, using MX, the first line of code is uh, called MX initialize. So uh, inside that function, it, we're trying to initialize MPI, if there's OpenMP stuff we need to do, or GPU stuff. And uh, uh, it might also read some runtime parameters through the, uh, you know, the command line options passed to the executable. It can also, in some cases, the user can uh, create, you know, MPI communicators and pass it to MX so we can just use what the user provided. And finalize, and we need that to free the resource we allocated. And then in between, Usually you want to use a function or, or use a pair of curly brace to create a scope. Uh, the reason for that is sometimes you have this object there and the C++ object has a destructor. You don't want the destructor to be called after they are finalized. Sometimes we'll get you some you know, arrows at the end of your run. Anyway, so MX uh, has a function that can provide you like a versions. Oh, sorry, the code actually didn't uh, show the string. I was, uh, uh, oh yeah, that's show. the code doesn't call the version function directly, but the initialize print out the version string. So it's useful so you know which version of LMX you're using, you know, a monthly release. And the, the eight is the number of commits after the uh, release and the, it also has a git hash, AD, in this case it's AD447 is the current git hash of the, of the code. And if the code is modified, it shows the word 30. Um, so now I'm going to talk about uh, some basic uh, uh, MX uh, concepts, MX classes. So as Andrew has mentioned, you know, it's a, so MX is a block structure, the MR framework, and it's a structured mesh. So we use a class called a box to represent a logically rectangular domain in global integer you know, space. And we also have a class called a int vect, which is a integer tuple, ijk, you know, one for each direction. And the box also has a concept of an index type. It's whether, you know, it's a cell or nodal. And, it, and here is a uh, example of a stacked E mesh. So in this kind of mesh, you have like a, the B field is on the face. For example, Bx is on the X face. So it's nodal in X direction, but uh, at the cell center in Y and Z direction. And uh, for the mesh on the left, this is just a cartoon version. And this is from a real, uh, I think it's a white dwarf merger simulation. So box array is uh, an array of uh, boxes on a, a single AMR level. And uh, here is the example of, uh, you know, creating a very simple box array. So you start with a box that has say 128 cells and uh, then you create a box array with only a single box. And then you can chop that into smaller boxes and then if you print out the what's in there, you can see it break into eight boxes. This is from zero to 63, you know, from 64 to 127, so that kind of thing. And in practice, you don't 
usually need to you know, make your own box array because uh, we provide some other utility classes that will help you to create all those uh, box arrays. And uh, another class we have is called a distribution mapping. It, that describes uh, like which MPI processor owns the data because the box array is a, like a global um, you know, construct. So it's not uh, the, uh, uh, each process only on a small fraction of that thing. So the distribution mapping describes how we do the MPI decomposition, domain decomposition. And we have like a different uh, strategies. And here I show you two like, uh, you know, common strategies we use. And then the one on the left is what we call knapsack. That is uh, trying to make the world work as balanced as possible, but the uh, the disadvantage is you lose a locality. You know, the one on the right is based on a space filling curve. You can see, uh, so this is MPI processor zero, this is MPI processor one, and they are, you know, processor zeros boxes are on next to each other, so it will save you some, you know, uh, communication cost. And uh, so multifab is a uh, one of the most important concept in LMIX. So it's a distributed uh, container for data on a, a, a single LMR level. So the, the word multifab comes from uh, multiple fab, and the fab here stands for Fortran array box because uh, uh, what we have is essentially a, a a multi-dimensional array in the Fortran convention, the column matrix. And a uh, multifab can have multiple components. So, so, so uh, if you have like a, a three spatial dimension and a plus one component, that's like a four dimensional array for each fab, but we have multiple four dimensional arrays. And then they can have ghost cells because, you know, for like a finite volume, finite difference code, often the ghost cells is important. Or you have a, like a particle in cell code, the particle might deposit, you know, things into ghost cells of, uh, of, of a box. So, and for multifab, um, because now we're talking about the, like a, a real floating point of data, so we can choose what memory we want to use for those for storing those data, and um, so the multifab, uh, it's a C plus plus class uh, that we uh, make it non copyable. In that sense, you you, you couldn't de you, you you just say a multifab A equal to B that will not. Uh, uh, allow you to do that because uh, the reason is uh, to avoid uh, like unnecessary deep copy cost. But um, MX use modern C++, now we're using C++ 17, so, so the object is movable. And uh, uh, so he here's some examples of showing how, what we do with, uh, how do we construct a multifab. So, in this example, let's say we have a three component and the number of ghost cell, one ghost cell in X direction, two ghost cell in Y direction, no ghost cell in Z direction, and we can, we can construct a multifab. And it, if you run this on GPU, and it, this MF will be on uh, device, will, will be using device memory. And if we want something in CPU memory, we can say, oh, we want to use a memory arena. That's a CPU uh, memory arena. And you can, C++ has a concept of a move. You can move data from one to the other instead of uh, deep copying. So you can move and you can swap between two. So yeah, so it's a, it's a uh, flexible data structure and it, on the, Left, I show you some examples. So this is a uh, like a three total level LMR simulation, and this is what you can see on level zero. The data 
on level zero grade covered the entire domain, but you can see the resolution is, is pretty low. And then this is level one in part of the domain that uh, uh, you can see there are some interesting features we want to resolve. So it's a level one, and we can go even a higher resolution with level two. So the multifab is the data for like uh, each individual levels. And if you put them all together, then you, you end up with like this is a composite you know, the solution for the, for, from level zero to level two. And um, the multifab has a lot of uh, uh, building functions you can use. For example, you can set the value to the multifab. You can copy. This is a deep copy. You really copy the data from one memory location to another. So you can call local copy, which means the MPI is not involved. You can do a parallel copy because you may have two multifab. They are, uh, having di different uh, box array or distribution mapping. So this will internally will call MPI, but you don't have to explicitly you know, call MPI. And this field boundary does a ghost cell exchange, or sometimes you might want to do a, a global reduction. So this will compute the, uh, the mean value of uh, the data in this multifab, or you can have like one multifab minus another, and there are also some other interesting features you can use. You can create a, a so-called like aliens multifab without copying the data. And the, sometimes, you know, suppose you have a original multifab that has four component, density, velocity, three velocities. But now you have an existing function that actually expect uh, only velocity, not the first one density. And uh, so, you, you, you could uh, you know, use extra integer component to, with some offset. You probably should be able to do that, but you can also just create an aliens. It's very cheap. So just say, now make this uh, X velocity component to be my first component. And you can also take a raw pointers and create a, a multifab with, so, so this is useful is, uh, um, you know, some user might be using some other packages. They have already have their own like a, you know data structure there, and you can actually create MX data structure without you know reallocate any additional memory. You can just take the memory you know you already have and pass it to MX. So, of course, you know if you only use those built-in functions, it won't uh, get you very far, so you have to some, you know, usually you will have to write your own kernels to do the computation. So, so, so now let's talk about the, the uh, FRE box, which is a, uh, a multifab contain multiple, you know, uh, FRE boxes. So the FRE box itself is a, a container for a multi-dimensional array. Uh, usually you can think of it as a three plus one, three spatial dimension plus one actual you know, component. Again, this is also movable, but not uh, copyable. And uh, then there's a, a class we call array four. The reason for that is the F3 box is a, our existing class that before, you know, we had GPU support. And every box has a lot of things, that class has a lot of things there. It's not really suitable for GPU. So the array four is, is a, in some sense, it's like a similar to C++ 23's new thing called uh, MD spam. So it's a kind of like a array view into the data. And, but we support uh, negative index and it use a fortune uh, array syntax. So the, the, the point I want to emphasize is the array four usually owns the memory, but, uh, no, sorry, uh, array box usually owns the memory, but array four never owns the memory. And then that makes it much easier to, you know, you, you, can, you can copy the, Array four itself from uh, the CPU to GPU without 
you know, actually doing any real expensive data copying because it, what's inside is really just a pointer inside. And we have a uh, iterator for multifab called uh, MF iter. So it also supports logical tiling, which for CPU runs gets uh, important. It can improve cache efficiency and the uh, OpenMP performance. And here's some example code of, uh, uh, this is a simple operation. So I have two multifabs here, MF and MF2. And I just want to copy the data from MF2 to, M to MF. This is just as a demonstration. So, uh, so what do you can, you can do this in multiple ways. So here's one way to do it. You, I start a MF in the loop, and inside the loop, you get the uh, F3 box of uh, the destination multifab, you get the, the source F3 box, and then you can just say copy. And uh, here's copy can take uh, a template parameter, say, I want this copy to happen on GPU device. You can also try to do it on in the host if you choose to. And uh, so this code below is showing you instead of using the existing copy function, because, you know, uh, again, the F3 box has a lot of building function, but won't be able to do everything you want to do, right? So, so uh, oftentimes you have to write your own for loop. So, so this is just uh, how we, you can write your own for loop. Now, instead of uh, getting the F3 box, we get a, a, this uh, array four thing. This array four, so this multifab dot array will give you array four object, and this const array just means, uh, you know, give me array four, and I, uh, for read only. I'm not going to modify the code, so so it's a const. And then you can uh, use a parallel four function. That's why my x function. Uh, say uh, this first argument is is a valid box. That means the that's the region we're going to do the for loop. So it's uh, the uh, index range. And uh, the second argument, this whole thing from in, uh, this bracket here to the end of this uh, here is uh, a a single argument. It's a C++ lambda function. And so th what this lambda function does is for a given uh, index i, j, k, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy data from A2 to A1. And in this code, if it's built for CPU, it will run on CPU. And if it's run on like a, a beautiful GPU, it will also run on GPU. So it's a performance portable code that uh, can run on you know, multiple uh, platforms. And uh, what this array for does uh, conceptually is just this code on the, on the left. Uh, that is, you know, it, it given a box, in, in the box has a lower bound and upper bound. So it's a, a, it's a three dimensional for loop from low to uh, high and uh, the in the, most uh, uh, the loop body is just uh, copying data from one to the one array to the other, so it looks pretty much like a fortune code. Uh, and we have also have another way of of um, you know uh, doing this thing is uh, uh, you can also launch a parallel four to work on the whole multifab instead of uh, uh, using a MFE the loop and then work on each individual array. So this will, uh, this has a one X argument B and the box number. So, so this is, yeah. So this is another way to write uh, this example. Um, so MX is a, 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 a MR framework. So we support some common uh, operations that's uh, useful for AMR applications. So we have some built-in uh, classes like 
they are more they are more level. So uh, that support it has a lot of things already, you know, uh, created there for you. But it's a less flexible. If it's a, you know, you, you, if it suits your needs, that's a great way to do it. Another way is uh, uh, this class called the AML call that offer you more flexibility, but you have to write more code yourself. Um, and it support the regrading because you know you can tag cells for uh, mesh refinement and the grid generation stuff and the interpolation from cost to fine or average down data from cost uh, from fine level to cost level. And there are those like a flux register stuff because uh, for like conservation laws, you want your flux to be conservative. So at the cost fine interface, you have to do something special. And also for like MHD kind of stuff, you have like on the edge, you have those things you want to, certain properties you want to maintain. And, uh, and you can use different uh, time stepping strategies. And uh, 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 one thing I want to say is that also for high order run cutter with, uh, um, you know, AMR, it's actually non-trivial to fill the ghost cells for the, at the cost fine interface. So. Uh, so we have support for that kind of things, and we support uh, linear solver on um, multiple AMR levels. And uh, so usually you just uh, call, for communication, you just call MP, uh, for MX existing communication functions. And, but sometimes you ha if you have something very special and we offer the, uh, you know, capability for you to write your own, you know, uh, like a communication pattern. So for example, here is a multi-block uh, test. So you see this same blob of material goes from here and it then come out from, here. so it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a special connection pattern, but so you can specify what you want to do. Uh, we also support like a MPMD, so you can have like, for example, uh, two code, two executables. So one is a C++ code, another might be a Python code. The Python code might be using PyMX and uh, we support communication between the two. Uh, okay, so I don't have much time. Um, so we also support uh, embedded boundary. So I'm not going to go into details uh, of this thing, I guess. And the sparse linear system solver. And uh, here are like a, uh, some examples of the equation of solve. The first one is kind of like a diffusion stuff. And a special case for this is just a, a Poisson solver. And this is from uh, like a Navy Stokes equations. And this is uh, uh, from like, this, this is the electrical field, a curve, a curve of the electrical field. Anyway, so let me, uh, 